We've got Hugh as well on the programme. Good afternoon, Hugh. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, hello, uh, Professor Dolan. It's an honour to speak to you. Uh, I've been reading your book lately, The God Delusion, and the other week I had a bit of a debate with a friend that lives with me, and he was kind of putting across the thing that uh, everything's in order because God created us in his image, and therefore created everything perfectly for us to kind of live within, work within, and be able to worship him. And I put across the argument that it's all just natural, that everything, the complexities have just came across because that's the way it is. I do not think that sometimes all these people in the intelligent design and creationism have like a, an ego problem and therefore they have to believe in something like this? Yes, you're suggesting that they don't like the idea that, that they, that I personally am just a, just an accident sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, it, of course, natural selection is not accidental, so I shouldn't have put it that way, but I think there are people who, for their own vanity, would like to be, would like to think of themselves as created in the image of God. Uh, I actually think you don't have to, I mean, I don't care whether people's vanity is tickled or not, but um, I, I don't think that one has to feel humiliated by, what, by the truth. It is actually rather remarkable that we have come about through three billion years of a, a long, drawn-out process, we along with all other living creatures. And I tend to feel that there's a lot of fear among people like that there as well. There may be fear as well, yes. Lord, in and, case and, some um, die, well, something's going to harm them. Yeah, that's, possi that's possibly true as well. But of course, it, to, to dispel your fear by inventing untruths is a, is a pretty inadequate way to dispel your fear. Thanks for that, Hugh. Uh, Richard, you're nearly breaking the radio whilst your phone system here with All our right. text messages and calls. Oh, wait, 459-555-678. Johnny uh, in Belfast wants to know if, um, if you have any response to the Christian's explanation for the origin of dinosaurs. Um, I don't know what the Christian's response, and the, I mean, the Christians that I know accept the evolutionary e explanation for the origin of dinosaurs. That's to say people like bishops, archbishops, popes, uh, and and respectable vicars and parsons generally. Um, if there's another Christian interpretation of the origin of dinosaurs, le let's hear it. I, I think there are some literalist readings of the text uh, suggested whereby dinosaurs and human beings were around at the same time. Maybe uh, that's what well, he has in mind, and, yes, and that, obviously that you would challenge that. That's, of course, complete nonsense. Dinosaurs went extinct approximately 65 million years ago uh, in a great catastrophe at the end of the Cretaceous era, probably almost certainly caused by an asteroid colliding with the Earth. Uh, Barbara asks, uh, says, I love the program last night, Richard. Absolutely wow factor. Where did the primordial soup come from? Where did the primordial... Well, first of all, thank you. I'm, I'm delighted you, you love the program. Um, the primordial soup was, was there in the early, um, well, billions of years of the planet. Uh, it was the water in which organic substances were dissolved, and these organic substances would, according to the theory, um, gradually, under the laws of chemistry, gave rise to a um, self-replicating molecule. Nobody knows how this happened, and people are working on it. Frankie's asking about the Phoenix Mars mission, Richard. He says that they've, they've found possible evidence of life on Mars. Where does this leave the idea of creation? Well, the, the idea that there might be life on Mars is very interesting. Um, one suggestion is that life actually started on Mars and was imported into Earth from Mars. And that's not quite as far-fetched as it sounds because we definitely know that there are asteroids, rocks, which are on Earth, which have come from Mars. So it is, there has been a certain amount of traffic of rocks from Mars to Earth. Um, if there were a genuinely independent origin of life on Mars, if, if say, we found life on Mars and it didn't have DNA, or had DNA but a different DNA code or something of that sort, that would be a simply stunning discovery. If we discover that there's life on Mars and it's the same kind of life, say bacterial life, as we have here, then that would suggest cross-infection. That would be interesting enough. But if they ever found a completely different kind of life, that would be totally stunning. And it would suggest that life originates relatively easily. Whereas I think current orthodoxy would be that the origin of life on this planet was a very rare event. And probably if there is life elsewhere in the universe, there are little islands of life that are far, far separated from each other, so they very seldom encounter each other.
Richard, we have some politicians, some leading politicians in Northern Ireland who, who are asking for equal time for the teaching of intelligent design theory in the schools. What's your response to that suggestion? Well, let's also have equal time for the Hindu theory that the cosmos was created from the churning of a cosmic butter churn. Let's also have equal time for the Flat Earth Society. Let's also have equal time for the theory of a certain Nigerian tribe that the world was created from the excrement of ants. Let's have equal time for the tribe that believes that the world was hatched from a cosmic egg. There's any number of crackpot theories to which you could give equal time. The only reason for giving time to a scientific theory is that there's evidence for it. Let the rivals to evolution come up with some evidence, and by all means, let's teach it. But there isn't any. Do you, do you think you would have enjoyed meeting uh, da da uh, Darwin himself of in course. terms of his personality? Do you think you had gotten on with him? Well, he was a delightful man. He was a, he was a gentle man. Uh, he was a wonderful family man, incredibly intelligent, incredibly knowledgeable, deeply committed to the truth and to um, conveying the truth to others. Uh, yes, he would have been a wonderful man to meet. Who else would be on your top ten thinkers of all time list? Oh, Einstein, <laughs> Newton, um, gosh, Shakespeare. Jesus Christ? Well, I would, I would be curious to meet him. I don't think he was that great a thinker, but I would certainly be curious to meet him to find out what really happened. George W. Bush said he was that Jesus Christ was the, the political philosopher who most inspired his ideas. Yes, and look where we are now. Richard Dawkins, thanks for talking to us. That was uh, Professor Richard Dawkins from his home in Oxford, giving us a lot of his time, taking many of your calls. Uh, we, we are inundated with text messages and calls. I'm sorry we couldn't get through many, many more of them. Richard was very generous with his time in... in